Welcome to part three, everybody. As you can see, we got our throttle body cleaned up. We're getting ready to put our gaskets on here. So like I showed you in part two, this side goes like this. And then the other side flips in reverse, goes like this. One of our bolts wants to fall out, so we're gonna have to kind of shove it up in there. All right, as far as these two go, I'll show you how we're gonna handle that because we gotta put bolts back in. All right, so let's go ahead and get this thing set back down inside the car. Now, we want to do this so that we don't interrupt that uh, sensor down there. So, let's see how we can do this so we don't interrupt that sensor down there. All right. Get your bolts lined up inside your... Pick your piece up. Okay. All right, and we're going to set it back down inside just the way it came out. Nice and easy. Make sure that you don't get your dipstick caught inside the mess of everything. Pick up your cables and just kind of scoot this thing down in there. Make sure that your gaskets don't fall off in the process. The electrical you gotta move out of the way as you do this you get your heater tube caught on your injector wiring you gotta just pick your tube up scoot it to the side just kind of sit it down nice and easy just like that all right now we lost one of our gaskets so we're gonna have to grab it and bring it back up our gasket got drop down inside the engine here so we gotta I might have to get it with a pair of grabbers so let me grab that and then we'll continue on okay I got my gasket back so we're gonna set you over here now so you can see what we're doing all right so we're getting ready to lower this down into that space down there so do this very carefully Easy does it down. Once you get past the wiring harness, it's actually pretty easy. Make sure that you don't uh, get your wiring trapped. Just kind of just pick the back back a little bit, bring it down a little bit, down into that slot down there. Alright, there we go. Now we're just about in our position. You gotta get it down a little bit further. Alright, just about there. Now this is the part where you want to have a long handled screwdriver ready and I'll show you why. You see that bolt down in there? That's inside your coolant jacket. We gotta trip that bolt back. So let me go grab my um long handled screwdriver and we're going to trip that screw that bolt back it'll sit flat down then we can go ahead and put our upper gaskets in because we're going to put the bolts in it to hold it up all right now we're going to take our screwdriver and kick that screw back just a little bit so we can get it down underneath that spot right there we got to pick the back up because we're crossed our back's down too low. We got to pick it up just a little bit so we can get our bolt holes line up. And of course, we have the problem that we had before when we took it out. There's bolts down past the wiring here because we're caught on our electrical again. Oh, yeah. Make sure we're okay on the back, that we haven't done anything back there that's going to cause a problem. Whoops, oh, we lost our seal on the back, so we're going to have to retrieve our seal on the back. So, let me get this situated and I'll be right back. Okay, I'm not sure where we left off on the video, but uh, let me show you what we got done so far. Uh, you want to get your belt on. 
before you get too far involved in here i mean you can still get the belt on later on but it's a lot easier if you put it on before you tighten the bolts up i got one of the bolts in the back lower down there tightened up that one right down there you're going to need a uh, one of these things it is a stubby 13 millimeter ratcheting wrench let me tell you what you get one of those down in there you'll get this thing done in no time you see the wire down there with the orange on the back that goes to a switch on the back side of that housing you want to make sure you connect that when you're done down in there or you're going to have a sensor nut function okay so when you get this set down in position you want to make sure you get your little gasket pucks i guess that's what we're going to call them gasket pucks uh you want to make sure you get them lined up this one up in the front dropped so i had to pull it back pick it up and get the bolt through you can see a little bit of the blue right there make sure it lines up make sure your bolts start too same thing on the back the back one dropped too so i had to pick it back up if you have a problem getting the bolt started what i recommend is with one hand put your box end of your wrench or whichever end you can get on the bolt in position take a flathead screwdriver put it on the end of the bolt head put a little bit of pressure on that bolt head as you turn it do that a couple times that should get the bolt started and then you'll feel a definite grab when your bolts ready to go so I got to get that one down there done I got two up front here I need to tighten up then we'll do these top ones together because they're the easiest and then um we need to start hooking up our uh hardware that sits on top of the housing along with getting our injectors back inside the intake so uh don't forget this has to have thread seal put back on it or it's going to leak so we'll grab the pipe so, uh, pipe sealer and we'll get that done but i just wanted to give you a little bit before uh, we get too far involved and uh yep i'll see you back in a minute okay this is kind of an example of what i'm talking about i'm on the final bolt on the front it's the inner bolt i got about maybe seven turns left on it before it's all the way seated then we can start on the top but what i want to show you is I got my screwdriver down in front of the bolt. It's holding the ratchet on so it doesn't fall off because if you don't do this, you'll take two or three turns and the ratchet falls off. So this is kind of like a tech tip if you want to about how you can hold your ratchet. You just put one hand on your, um, put one hand up here on your uh, screwdriver and take your, your other hand and just tighten it down and then when you get it all done pull your screwdriver up and uh, pull your wrench off and you're done now you can also if you're having problems getting the wrench on you can slide it down in there and then use the screwdriver to help push the wrench onto the bolt so i've had to do that on this one already so i'll be back here in a couple minutes after i get that tightened up we'll move on to the top and we'll start putting our electrical back together and getting our emissions hooked up getting our fuel system back together so we're going to start moving pretty quickly here in just a minute okay we got our bottom four bolts done those have to be done in sequence just because they're irritating start with the outside on the back then you move to the inside on the back this front one the upper one you can get with a ratchet so you can zip that one in pretty quick and then that bottom one I just showed you where I had the wrench on with the screwdriver. So that's how you want to do that one. We got all four of our lower bolts done. Let's finish getting our mounting bolts done up. Those are going to be real simple. We're going to use a uh, 13 mil swivel socket so we can get underneath the electrical. So you've got one. I don't know if you can see it. You got one back here. So we'll get that one real quick. Just got to kind of just guide your way around here. Now, if you want to torque these, the torque spec is 18 foot-pounds. 
if you want to just ugga dugga it then go ahead and do that just be careful you don't snap your bolt head off let's see if i can get my socket in there and get on that thing there we go if i can get my socket on there. Alright, I'm going to get this tightened up. I'm going to take a couple quick turns like that. I'm pretty sure it's tight enough. And then you got to get this one right here. You got to go above the transmission detent control. Get that one right there. I get my socket on it. And then you want to just kind of Give that a good tug. Try not to lose your socket down in the abyss. And we got these two up front we got to get. There's one you can't see. It's right under here. Got this electrical in the way. So this socket is perfect for this. You want to pick up your electrical. Come in from the bottom. You can get it from the bottom. Like this. Just kind of put your socket up on it there. Make sure it's straight up on it. You gotta sometimes you gotta pull up on your electrical to get it to go on all the way. You get it to a certain point and you push down on the electrical and get it from the other side. Push down on it and you can get on it with your tool here. Like that. Just kind of just do a couple clicks like that, and then easy does it. The last one's down by the belt, it's way in the back down there. That one you gotta go underneath this hose. You can get this with a straight socket if you want to. A 13 deep works well on this one. Since I got this swivel on here, we're just gonna go at it with the swivel. And get on there like that. kind of tighten that down all right now we got to get our water pump cover back on you want to get your uh, tool set up trust me you're going to need it when we get to that bottom bolt all right so your bolts you've got three studs and then you've got one solid bolt this one right here this one goes in the lower corner Okay, I don't know if you can see very well, but let me get you in a spot we can see pretty good here so we can continue on what we're doing here. All right, this goes in this lower corner down here. So you want to make sure you got your gasket set. You want to get your bolt in position. I've got to move the upper hose so we can get this on the other side of the transmission pipe. We got to get this down underneath here, so let's move our hose out of the way set this down here now if you were successful in getting this pipe off then this will go on really easy for you but if you weren't this is what you got to deal with we're going to put one of the upper studs in to get it lined up to that bottom bolt it's going to be a chore to put back in so what you want to do is you want to get one of your upper upper You want to be very careful when you put this together because you're going into aluminum and if you're not careful it will strip it take your you don't have to thread it in all the way just enough to hold it on now we can go after our bottom bolt our bottom bolt's going to be a little bit difficult because we got to couple of hoses we got to move around here all right. All right. you gotta get right down in here it's right there if you can get it started by hand then I think you'll do all right have your uh, you gotta take our gloves off here because I have to do this barehanded I can't do it with gloves on so we're gonna take our Move our hoses out of the way and get this down under here. 
right there on that bolt. Okay, you can kind of see where I'm at here. I got that bolt located. It was under the car. Got that one installed. You put it in by hand using a magnet. And then after you get it in the bolt hole all the way, you pull the magnet back while holding it in the hole with your finger. Then you get your swivel out of your toolbox and you put it on your deep 10 millimeter. And you tighten it up. These are 89 inch pounds if you want to torque wrench these. If you just want to give it a good twist when you get it all done, kind of like this, you'll be fine. And you come back up here while you got your swivel on your socket there, just kind of tighten this one up. I'm using my bit driver because it's easier than trying to get my ratchet down in there because my ratchet's broke. So you just want to make sure that's nice and tight right there and then this one right here is the special one that you have your dipstick hooked to so you got to take the nut off so you can tighten the stud up then you can come back through and put your dipstick tube back on and we'll go ahead and we'll tighten that up like this and you want to just kind of give it a nice good twist like that if you want to you can try to get it at an angle like this, if you want to do it this way, get it at an angle and just kind of pry it over like that. But you're not going to get very far because your universal is going to roll on you. But uh, I'll go back over those with the ratchet here in about two seconds. Make sure I got them tight all the way. You can tighten it up with the universal on it. I do it all the time. All right, so if we're going to tighten it up, we're going to get our long quarter drive extension with our setup we had. Turn our ratchet to on. And we're just going to go up here. We're going to start at the top and work our way back down to that bottom nut, that bottom bolt. Just kind of just want to just twist it a little bit like that with your ratchet. Go back over this one. Like I said, if you want to put a torque wrench on this, 89 inch pounds. Get this one down here on the bottom that you can see barely. And we'll go ahead and we'll tighten that one down. And there's that one. And then we got that one that we just put in. That one's a little hard to get to, so you got to move some stuff to get to it. Get your socket down there on it though. Kind of like this. There we go. Almost. There we go. Make sure. Oh, see, that one wasn't tight all the way. That would have been a leak. That's why you always want to go back over your stuff if you Cause you never know. Alright, that one's tight. Okay, so we got our water pump cover back on. Alright, we need to start putting hoses back on. So we're going to start in the back. And the reason we're going to start in the back is because down in the back, we got to reconnect an electrical sensor. So we got to get our electrical back to where it's comfortable. Make sure all of our lines are where they need to be. And then I got to reach in the back down here. Yeah one orange ended connector plugs in back here so to get to that you gotta uh, there's no real way to show you unless we do maybe like this you can kind of see where i'm going i'm going down in here so you gotta reach around behind the master cylinder now actually no you can kind of go in move your electrical out of the way you just kind of go down in here Kind of like you were when you were messing with that bolt. You got a plug right here. You got to locate the uh, other end of it. Which should be... There's the ground. Should be... Back up in here somewhere. You got to plug this plug back in or you're going to have a sensor not functioning. There's the switch. 
can feel it with my finger. I'm gonna get this plug back in. There it is. We got that plug reinstalled. Make sure it's in all the way. Yeah. You want to do that when your electrical's relaxed because it's tied into all of this down in here. And if you don't do it then, or if you try to do it without your electrical relaxed, you're not going to get very far. All right, so while we're back here, we got a hose to hook up. Right down here is your back heater hose. So we're going to take that back over here. We're going to plug that back in just like this. If you want to put something on here like Vaseline or something to kind of help you put these back on, you can do that. Just make sure that when you put it back on, it goes all the way to the end of the barb. That you don't have any electrical in your way like this thing here. You just want to push it down on there until it bottoms out. And it could take a minute for it to get there. There we go. Almost there. Got to kind of watch it as you push down on it there we go get our pliers out we we'll use our needle nose for this since they're nearby and just kind of grab them and push on the back side with your finger or a screwdriver or whatever you have handy you can slide this uh, clamp down You can do that and have a spring and bust your fingers. Screwdriver. All right, go ahead and grab your hose clamp pliers. You gotta reach these in just a little bit. There we go. Now we can get in there. We gotta tighten. We gotta. Engage our clamp. And we push that back. You take a screwdriver down on the bottom and just kind of, as you're pushing it down through there, just kind of guide it down. It's going to be a pain in the butt, just as long as that clamp don't do a 180 when it lets go. Because then you're going to have to take your hose back off, reset your hose clamp, try it again. Try not to let that happen. Just kind of work it down. There we go. And you'll feel it. You'll feel it when it gets down to where it wants to be and then you just release it. If it, if it locks on you, just do this. That one's on. Okay, that's the only hose on the back we got to hook up for the cooling system. We got to put our EGR tube back on. So our EGR tube is this bolt right here. I believe it's a third. Okay, I got the EGR tube straightened out. What I did was I used a deep 10 socket. I stuffed it down in the front of it. And then uh, I had that on an extension so I could have something to hold on to. I grabbed a regular hose clamp and my electric ratchet and I tightened that hose clamp down as tight as I could get it and it rounded that back out so I got it put back in the hole I got the bolt back in it we're good to go it's not going to leak putting your EGR valve in next okay on this one your kit does not come with a new gasket but if your gasket is stuck to the valve as long as it doesn't leak you'll be fine if uh, later on you get an EGR code, you're gonna have to replace that um, gasket. It does not come in the kit that you get for your water pump. I think they're like maybe five or 10 bucks at your parts store if you need to get another EGR valve gasket. Don't forget you got this heat shield here we gotta put back on too. So these are 10 millimeter. So you're gonna need your deep 10. I gotta locate mine. So we got it all set up here. All right, so you're gonna put your EGR valve back on. So your EGR valve goes on. See how it's rounded here? And it's rounded in here. There's also a, a raised portion 
Make sure that lines up just like that. If you've got some litmus marks, you can use for reference because these are the slide type EGR valve, so it uh, goes in several different ways. You just got to make sure you get it the correct way. Get your bolt started first before you go tightening them up. These are 89 inch pounds as well. So just make sure you get the bolt started by hand. Get a couple threads in and then go after it with your ratchet. So we got this one back here. Get that one real quick. That one's in. Get this side now. All right, that one's nice and tight. All right, and we got to put our heat shield back on. Let's see, our heat shield goes like this. But you got to move some wiring to get it down in there. See how that slides down in there like that? And then your bolts should drop right on top of your studs there. Then you got your two flat nuts. They go on top. Get those started with a couple threads and then zip them down. I don't think there's a torque value for the nut. If you want to do 89 inch pounds because you're doing it on everything else, you can do that. All right, and I'm going to go ahead and get those tightened up. All right, get this one over here. I find that ironic that I just dropped the socket right on top of it without seeing it. All right, so we got that done. EGR is hooked up. Let's see, what's next? We got to get our, um, let's see, do we have any electrical we got to plug into that? Yeah, we got this plug right here. We got to plug into that. So let's go ahead and get that plug back in. We'll slide that underneath the uh, transmission cable. All right, this cable here, we can probably put that, that uh, purge valve back on now. So let's go ahead and do the purge valve next. All right, so I went and got my grease. So I'll show you how this works. You've probably seen me do this a couple times if you've been here a while. All right, you got an O-ring right here on the end of your purge valve. Take a little bit of that and just kind of run it around in there. Don't get any down inside that tube. See that? That is not good. I'm gonna have to use a pick and pick that out. And take a little bit and right inside the hole you want to pull a little bit inside the hole to kind of give you a little bit of a hand here. You can't see it, but I'm putting a little bit in the hole there. Let me pick this uh, piece of lubricant out of here because you don't want this in the system. You just want it to... We'll see if the old... Uh... See, normally I take a pick and scoop it out, but I think we can do it with this flathead screwdriver. Yep, see that? Pick works better though. Pick works a lot better though. I don't know where my pick went. But if you want to, you can take your screwdriver, stick it in the hole and twist it and you'll get the rest of it out. All right, so we got all that cleared out. We can go ahead and put this in now. Got our lubricant on it. Set this in, it goes in flat. Look at that. Lubricant works every time. Slide it right in there. You don't want to rip that O-ring because if you rip that O-ring, you're going to have to put another one on it. So try not to do that. And we got our 10 millimeter there on the end. We'll go ahead and tighten that up. All right. That's all the rest of that. And this little red plug plugs into that right down in here. That's that. And then we got a tube that plugs into that, which is this tube right here with your check valve in it. That plugs onto here like that. So that's all done. This here goes to vacuum for your power brake booster. So that's got to come up here. 
that's got to come up here that plugs into here this is your vacuum for your power brake booster if I remember correctly because it doesn't go on the throttle body so we don't have to worry about that all right so we'll tighten that we'll get a, our pliers on that and we'll clamp that down kind of just nice and slow if you need to take pictures of how things went so you can put them back together the same way that's always a great idea I encourage that 100% that's why I make these videos because then I can go back see what I did see what I need to do and make it right all right so let's get our um, fuel rail put back on so I'm gonna pull you back get you repositioned so we can put the fuel rail on and then after we get the fuel rail on we'll start getting our hoses up front hooked up and see if we can get some uh, get this thing ready to fire off tonight I would hope so anyway all right fuel rail you got eight little o-rings every single one of those o-rings you're gonna have to put some grease on it because there's nothing more disappointing than putting your fuel rail down with your uh oh we gotta push these back down because we didn't unhook that nothing more disappointing than putting your fuel rail down having one of your injectors leak the minute you hit that key and i've been fortunate enough never to have that happen we got to get our electrical out of the way too because we got some electrical we got to hook up too so we gotta move that out of the way all right let's pick up our fuel rail the only thing holding the fuel rail to the car is the electrical so we just got to pick the electrical up and move it to the side so we can get to our o-rings clean the dirt off the end of your o-rings before you grease them Make sure that they're nice and clean. And we'll set the back ones in first. And actually, you set these in all at the same time. But you want to clean the dirt off of your O-rings. So that's what I'm doing. I'm taking my fingers. And then uh, you can do this with a rag if you want to. Yeah, I won't be surprised if he's coming in for fuel injectors one day. All right, let's go ahead and grease up some injectors. Start on the back. Let's see, we're gonna pick this sucker up so we can get it good. And if you dump grease, that's fine. Or dump fuel, that's fine. And just put a dab of grease on here. If you got dielectric grease like you use on spark plugs, that works too. All you want to do is put a, great, uh, a layer of lubricant on here so that when you push these down, it doesn't rip that O-ring. Last thing you want is that O-ring to rip. And then you're back to square one again. Try not to get any on the tip. It'll cause uh, spray pattern problems. And you'll have a misfire code and then you'll be like why is there a misfire code and you'll be oh well, that's right because i put vaseline on the end of the injector and then you got to pull the injectors out and clean them all right make sure you don't have any garbage in your holes and you want to take your rail set it nice and neat down make sure that all your plugs all your injectors are inside the intake all right when you got that done make sure that you got all your electrical where it needs to be i do believe this piece here needs to go underneath i'm not sure but i think it goes under well we can run it on the top a little plastic holder right here i think we can go ahead and do that with it all right ready one two three push and then same thing up front make sure that you get your uh Rail in place, one, two, three, push. Your injectors are in. Okay, we gotta put our injector bolts back in. So that's these studs right here. Now, if your car had anything attached to these studs, like a wiring harness or anything like that, you got one that's got an extra nut on it, make sure that you remember where that one came from and put that back where it was. Like this one here, it's got this, uh, I think I had an extra nut on this one. 
Yeah, I did because it went like that. Make sure you line up your injector plugs and then you tighten these down. You can go back over these with a ratchet and snug them. All right, and we got another one back here. If you had any bolts, regular bolt heads, you want to make sure those go back in too. All these are studs. Tighten that up. 89 inch pounds if you're torquing these down or just snug. All right, so moving on. Since we're working on the fuel rail, let's get our fuel rail connector back on. And then we'll start hooking some electrical to the top of this housing. And see, there's our net for that right there. So let's see if we can get our... Now, if you remember in part one, I think it was part one, we accidentally... Well, no, it was part two. We accidentally bent this. Here's a bit of advice. Before you pull this out, the housing out, take the fuel rail off. I was trying to do it without taking the fuel rail off and it just about bit me in the backside. So we're not doing that again. All right, so you got this part right here. It goes like this. Okay, there's a 13 millimeter nut or a 13 millimeter bolt that goes in the top of it. it goes right here. Then we've got that 15 millimeter plug that goes in the end, that tube that goes in the end. We got to put thread seal on it because that goes into this thermostat piece right here or this upper radiator hose. So we can't tighten that up yet. So let me go get my thread seal and I'll be right back. All right, we're going to go ahead and reseal this. So this is what I've been using right here. Seems to work pretty good. Get this in the plumbing department of your local Home Depot. Not a sponsor. And you take it. And you're going to take and squeeze a little bit of it out onto your... There we go, like that. And you take your finger. And you just kind of... Coat the threads with it. Like that. Now don't worry about it being too much because it's not. Yeah, don't worry about it being too much to where it's not going to make the threads. I'll put this back in the hole. Switch down here so you can see what we're doing. All right. Going in this hole right here. You want to start it by hand like you do everything else. Once you get it started and you got a couple threads in it, take your deep 15 socket, put it on the end there, and zip this back down. And then we're going to straighten up our fuel rail. And then we're going to attach that electrical back to the back of this uh, housing. And then we got to hook up our front hoses. We got a pipe. We got a coolant transfer hose we got to hook up still. I'm going to tighten that up as tight as you can get it without snapping it off. All right. This is for our coolant transfer tube comes off the uh, reservoir so we got to get this in now this sits straight down inside there like that straight and flat like that so you want to try to get that down the best you can and then grab your 10 millimeter nut hold that down now if you didn't bend this it'll have that natural bend already in it and you don't have to hold it down but since I bent it I gotta hold it down. So find our ratchet we were just using. You might hear in the background some uh, band music. It's a high school band. They're like a couple blocks away from me, and I believe tonight there's a football game. So uh, among the cicada noises, you might be able to hear some of the uh, band playing. Of course, you got the train, which is indicative of every Ranger Auto video. I think there's like maybe two or three that I've done where I didn't have a train in it. So that's just the way it is, I guess. When you live this close to railroad tracks. And right, we'll go ahead and we'll
straighten that up. And our fuel line is reattached. All right, let's start hooking up some hoses while we're up front here. Well, let's stop for a second and put this electrical back on. This electrical, by the way, bolts right here. And there's a small bolt, that one that we tried to put in the intake. It goes in this hole right here, 10 millimeter. It goes inside this, this blind hole right here. You gotta get this thing tied down. I'm not exactly sure what that wire does. When it comes to these cars, I don't have a full wiring schematic in my brain. I know what some of them do and I know what some of them don't do. Only because I've had to fix them. So. I'm going to go double long on your extension along with your deep socket so you can get way up here. You're going to go way up here. I'm going to put you back over here so you can see where we're at. We're over here. Pick this electrical connector up so you get down on top of this thing. You just kind of, as it starts to tighten up, you want to aim that thing to where it's, I'll show you in a minute. Do it like the old tiny screwdrivers. Hold it to the side like that when you tighten it down. And then we can plug our connector into it. That wiring is done. And that headache is out of here. All right, so we got some wiring. So let's draw you over to this side of the engine where I was before. We got some wiring we got to plug in. So let's plug in some electrical. We also have a vacuum hose we got to hook up too for that per the PCB valve which is right here. This one, you gotta get it rotated to where it's downward. And that snaps in there. Coil packs are back here. This plugs in your coil pack. Make sure you push the plastic clip back down. Let's see, we gotta lift this tube up, put it back in its holder so it doesn't get broke. We got this wire here we gotta plug in. Let's see, I think that's all we undid back here. So all of our wiring is done over here. So before we put the throttle body on, let's get our uh, tube reinstalled. So let me go grab that tube real quick. Coolant tube, which is this big mamma jamma here. This big mamma jamma feed one end. Yeah, you can see, okay. Feed one end under the power steering hose and that end goes on the recovery tank. Then you sit the other end down on top of these studs right here. Like that. And then this pipe, the uh, little elbow here that we have, that's what goes on this stud right here. And of course we got our bend in place because we got to hook our fuel rail back up. And then if your car has these little discs right here, you're going to see that they have a, a shape to them. You want to set them you see how that's got some wear marks on it? That face is down. So you take it and you just push them back down. I had two of them. I gotta find the other one. Which I'll probably find later. Anyway, you wanna put those down on there. To, those hold the cooling jacket or the coolant line. And then of course we got a clamp down here. We gotta reattach right here. So we'll grab our pliers and we'll just kind of scoot that over there. Line it up to the where it was. Let's see, I went too far. Gotta back it up. There we go. Right there. Don't snap your fingers with it like I just did. Alright, then we got let's see, I think we can put our upper radiator hose on now, which is underneath my tripod. It's been kind of aiding in my wonderful camera views here. All right. Oh, hold on a minute. Hold on a minute. We got to back up a second. That nut that I just put on that does not go there. It goes for our dipstick tube. We didn't hook our dipstick tube back up. So give me just one second. Let me correct that. Okay. Well, as you can see, we uh, kind of screwed up a little bit, but it's okay. We fixed it. 
that nut that was up here that I put on that injector actually goes down here. Hold your dipstick tube onto your uh, water pump cover. All right, so we got finish up front here. We got a plug in, we got to reconnect right here for our front coil pack. We got to reset this back down like that. Put our little clip back on there. Okay, so next thing we need to do is we need to get these hoses back on under here. All right, so we got a hose right here. You can't see it because it's out of focus. All right. All right, you see that hose right here? We got to reconnect that to your thermostat. So we're going to tip that back. And we'll see if I can get you in the shot here. I don't know if I'll be able to. Or not. We're going to try. All right, we're right down here on this hose. All right, so push this back. Slide that down, make sure the bottom of it's underneath the housing, and then just kind of rock it forward till it comes back up on there. And that went on a lot easier than it came off, let me tell you. That thing was a bear to get off of there. Move that back so you can see your clamp. You want to get underneath the uh, transmission cooler line. Make sure your pliers are set to the right gauge. Grab this. Well, let me see if I can scoot it over. Why don't you drop your tools down in the hole? Whichever way it works. Right. Yeah, let's try it the other way then. This is another one of them walking clamps. So if you, uh, in the process of removal, if you accidentally locked it, you can just unlock it by sticking a screwdriver in the uh, open end and then just kind of pushing on it. Or you can pry it apart. This is not working for me today. Alright, so let me show you what happens when we can't get it. Can't clamp on a... Set up our pliers here. Take our pliers. Get them situated where we need them to be. And we go ahead and we clamp our pliers together. You want to kind of loosen them up enough to where you can twist on the uh, adjuster. Get that adjuster down the best you can. Clamp that sucker nice and tight like that and kind of start sliding it up the yeah, we need to go a little bit tighter with it, so let's loosen it back up. This is, uh... And then we can move these, this clamp up, kind of just guide it up by hand. Try not to bang the camera, I don't know what you're doing. Let me see if I can get you over here and see better. There we go. Now you can see what we're doing. All right. Try to get you in line here so we can get this clamp on. All right, let's get that clamp on. Just kind of roll it back and forth. All right, you want to kind of, with this last little bit, you're going to have to get these as tight as you can get them because it's going to be very difficult to get it over this bump right here. As soon as you do though, let go of them. And there's our clamp on our thermostat. Okay, our thermostat's connected. All right, we got one hose right there we gotta get, which is this great big long hose right here that we've uh, seen and done stuff with over the years. That goes on there like that. All right, this one's a uh, normal clamp, but we're gonna, because we had problems with the other one, we're gonna vice grip it. You gotta loosen up your vice grips a couple turns so where you can get it around the clamp. And then you can, after you get it grabbed, then you tighten it up. See, you don't wanna try to tighten it up before you grab it because you won't, you won't make it. And you just kinda of slide this one down there. Just kinda of easy does it. Keep your fingers clear in case it snaps like that. And get it lined up, let it go. That hose is connected. 
All right, so the next thing we got to do is hook up our fuel. We're going to do that last. We're going to put the throttle body on now. All right, so let me go grab the throttle body. I also grabbed our belt tensioner because we're getting ready to put that on too. Now, if you followed my uh, rule of thumb and you put all your bolts back in your holes, you'll have all your bolts. All right, also you have to pay attention to which way this came off because there is no up or down on it. We could clean it since we got it off, but I'm not going to because I'm already behind on this job and we need to get it done. So, all right, first thing we need to do is we need to locate our connector for our throttle body. It sits on that side. All right, let's take our bolts out and set them up on our cowl. All right, I'm gonna take this right here and we're going to install it like this. The throttle body goes like this. And let's see, we're going to, this bracket comes down. I'm not sure exactly which side of that vacuum line it sits on. And you get your bolt started and then you get it through the hole. Line it up on the back. Get it started by hand. If it doesn't go in easy, back it up and start over. has to go in easier it's not going to go in right and you're going to have a vacuum leak ask me how i know actually don't because i'm not going to tell you and then we're going to go ahead and we're going to transfer this to the electric ratchet Tighten it up until you got all your bolts in. In case you got to move this thing around. And then that bottom bolt hole goes in here. As soon as I locate the hole. There we go. It'll pull this cable all the way to the back so we can get our thread started. that down in there and then we'll get the other two bolts started those go right here right in here and you might have to take the socket and start it like this Unless it doesn't want to start, which is what we're trying to do here. We're trying not to start. I'm going to have to grab our flashlight, take a look in there, and see if our holes are lined up. Um, well, no, they're not. Okay. So let's loosen up our. See, this is why you don't tighten it up. Now loosen up our bolts here so we can move this around. You don't want to loosen it up to the point where it comes out. You just want to be able to do this with it. All right. So then we'll do what is known as fishing. So if you notice, these bolts have a uh, a flat a flat end on them. It's kind of like an alignment. That's what this is about to do. We're going to put it through the hole, and then we're going to. Move this around until we find the hole. And we just found it. That's why you don't put tighten your bolts up till you're done. Alright, that one's threaded in. We got one more to go. And that one goes in this lower hole down here in the bottom. You don't lose it on the transmission. You gotta locate that one too all right now you got all your bolts and you can tighten them up so now we're gonna 
tighten up our bolts. Start in the lower corner. Go in the next upper corner, like right here. And you're gonna go in the lower corner on this side. Basically a big X is what you're doing here. And then 89 inch pounds, we're gonna torque these down. So let me go grab my torque wrench. All right, our torque wrench is set up from the last thing we did. 89 inch pounds, we're gonna go around and we're just gonna check our torque. And come up here, do that one. All right, that's torqued. All right, we're done with that part. All right, we gotta hook our fuel line back up. So our fuel line has a clip that goes on it. It's a safety clip. Usually these stay attached to the hose. Oh, we might as well hook up our uh, electrical to our throttle body here. All right, let's go ahead and feed this over top of our, no, let's go underneath our detent with it. See this right here? This is where that's supposed to be attached to, this piece right there. Push that down till you hear it snap. All right, when you hear it snap, all right, this little clip right here goes up inside like that, on like that. That is your safety clip that keeps this line from blowing off. All right, we're gonna have to get some light on the next situation because we're putting on our tensioner for our belt. We got it sitting over here in the far corner. We also got a, a, a guard that goes on top of it too. So let's see if we can get this done. We're running out of daylight here realistically. To you guys, probably seems like nothing, but to me, it's like almost dark 30 here. So feed your bolt through. Now I did a video on this one where we changed out this tensioner. So if you haven't watched that baby yet, go ahead and go watch that one. Because this is uh, not going the way it's supposed to. Alright, let's set our light bulb right there so we can see what we're doing. Don't worry about this belt right now because we're going to take care of that in a minute. we got to get our light set up so we can see what we're doing here. It's really hard to find a spot to park a light bulb in this car. Oh, we got to transmission thing you gotta do something okay. wanna all right we'll put it over here then helps to the bottom of our sorry about the glare all right so that ain't going the way I want it to so we're gonna take that back out slide your you gonna set this thing flat inside here and get this back bolt started first. I'll tighten that down. At least get it started, and then we got to get this front one done, which goes like this. All right, and then we'll grab our socket that we just had. Tighten those bolts up real quick. And then tighten this side up. And we'll go ahead and we'll check those at 89 inch pounds. Normally you don't have to torque these down, but I don't want to have to go after my ratchet again, so we're just going to just check them with the torque wrench. Yeah, that one's good. 
That one's good. Okay, now we can go ahead and put our belt back on. Alright, to do the belt, we need our ratchet. And we're going to have to move you so you can see what we're doing here. Alright, so to put the belt on, it goes a little something like this. Make sure that you're on your pulleys, first of all. So, let's see, we're on our bottom pulley. Alright, and then you want to, you know, let's see if we can bring this thing above the tensioner here. I'm going to do something here real quick. By the way, there's a part four. Yep, you're going to have a part four to this one. Because we're going to get ready to stop this here. We still got a little bit more to do. We're going to do that on part four. And we're going to actually do a startup and run on it for part four, too, because it's crucial because this is considered a major repair that you have to do a, there's a procedure you need to do after you get this all done. So let me see here. I hope you can see that okay. Make sure you're on your bottom pulley. Looks like we're on our bottom pulley. This belt's usually a headache to get on here, so don't be surprised if you have problems getting your belt on too. There's that. If we gotta start it up, we can't put the cover back on here yet because we gotta start it up. Make sure that we're on all of our let's see we're not on all of our right here, so we can go ahead and pull that back. And then you want to take your Depending on if you're working in the dark, make sure that you're on all your pulleys on the bottom. All right, so that's going to do it for part three. Part four, we're going to put some fluid in it. Actually, let's hook up some more electrical connectors. I think that connector goes to this thing here. All right, make sure all your electrical is hooked up. Part four, we're going to put the air box back in. We're going to put coolant in it. We're going to check all of our connectors one last time. We're going to start it up, check it for leaks. And then I'm going to do the heat cycle on it to make sure that it doesn't get above 230 degrees. So that's in part four. So I will see you then.